boys and girls. This is a lovely day. I'm so glad you're joining us for the Sunday School lesson. This is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Let's ask him to bless our Sunday School lesson today. So let's pray. We thank you, O oh God, for your presence with us. We thank you that we have the, the time and the opportunity and the permission in this land to be able to worship you each and every Sunday. We thank you that we can do this even though we are not all together. May this be a time when we learn more of you and learn how to grow to please you. In the wonderful name of Jesus, amen. We're going to sing a few songs. I love to sing. So I would like you, while I'm singing, if you haven't got your Bible, to go and get your Bible. So that the one song I'm going to sing, it's about my Bible and I. So you need to have your Bible so that you can hold it to sing with me. So you hurry off and get your Bible. And those who have your Bible already, we'll start with a familiar one, read your Bible, pray every day. So let's sing, read your Bible. Read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. And you'll grow, grow, grow. And you'll grow, grow, grow. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. That's a good thing to grow. But there's a second verse. Don't read your Bible, Forget to pray, forget to pray, forget to pray. Don't read your Bible, forget to pray, and you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. And you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. And you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. Don't read your Bible, forget to pray, and you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. That would be very, very sad. It doesn't mean physically. It means that inside Jesus growing in you would be getting less and less important. You'd still be the same on the outside, but on the inside, you'd be very different. So those who went to get your Bibles, you've got your Bible now, haven't you? So are we ready? And you can move around. I'm not going to move that much, but you can move around because we're traveling with our Bibles together. Are you ready? My Bible, my Bible and I, my Bible. My Bible and I, oh, what a wonderful treasure God gave without measure. We are traveling together, my Bible and I. Did you like that? Good. Now, to travel together doesn't mean you carrying your Bible in your hand all the time. It means you've learned from the Bible and you've put it in your head and in your heart and you're living it. So now I'm going to do it without the Bible, but with the contents in my heart and my head inside. So, are we ready? My Bible, my Bible and I, my Bible, my Bible and I, my Bible, my Bible and I, my Bible, my Bible and I. Oh, 
what a wonderful treasure God gave without measure. We are travelling together, my Bible and I. Every day, everywhere. Isn't that wonderful good news that we can always have God travelling with us? Because the Bible is his word and his word is in our heads and our hearts. Now why don't you sit down somewhere, I'm going to sit down too, and have your Bible ready because we're going to read our Bibles. So I've got my Bible open and I want you to open your Bible in the New Testament at the Gospel of Luke, Luke's Gospel, chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. So I'll just give you a moment to find that while I tell you what it is. Jesus loved to tell stories. Jesus is the best storyteller ever because he takes things that we are familiar with and then he gives special meaning to them which helps us to grow more like him. So have you found it? Well done. I'm not going to start at verse 1, so go down to, in my Bible, it's the second paragraph, and you're looking for verse 5. 5. Verse 5. Have you found it? Well done. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering his seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on. And the birds of the air came down and ate it all up. Some fell on rock. And when it came up, the plants withered because there was no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, fool, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up. It yielded a crop a hundred times more than was sown. Isn't that wonderful? And then Jesus said, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Isn't that a strange thing? We all have ears. What did Jesus mean by that? He meant that we must listen to what we hear. Some goes in and it doesn't stop there and it's gone. It's in and out and gone. So we want to do what Jesus said, have ears to hear. So let's think about the farmer and his seeds. In the olden days they didn't do like today. Now is the planting month where people are planting their mealies. So the farmers make holes in a long line. And when they've done that, they then walk down the line and they put two seeds in each hole. In case one doesn't grow, the other will grow. And that's a good thing. But the old time farmers didn't do it like that. They had a bag here in front of them and they just took the seeds and scattered it. Can you see my hands throwing the seeds out? So of course they didn't all grow in the right place. And that's why it said some fell on the path. Now I want you to think about where you have taken a shortcut across a lawn. You're not allowed to do that at school. Why not when it's quicker? I'll tell you why. Because you make a path and it's, it's got no grass. It's brown and bare and ugly. And the teachers and especially the headmaster and the ground staff, they want a beautiful lawn with no path. So you see, that's what happened for the farmer. People were tramping up and down the edge of his field and the ground was now very hard and very brown. And so the seeds couldn't grow. It was too hard. And before they got a chance anyway, the birds came swooping down and ate all the seeds. No crop. Hapana. Nothing. Isn't that very sad? That was a waste of seed. Now that's verse 5. Let's look at verse 6. 
who can see, but don't shout out, who can see what happened to the second lot in verse 6. It fell on, well done, it fell on rocks or stony ground, your Bible might say. And look at what happened when it came up. What happened when it came up? You are right. It withered. It died. Why? Because there was no moisture. What happened is the soil is too shallow, not very much soil where the rocks are. So the poor plants couldn't put down roots. And if you've got no root, you know this from school, the roots suck up the water and the rest of the leaf gets the water from the roots. No roots, no leaves, no crop. Go to the next verse. Who can find what happened to the next lot of seeds? Well done. We don't like this. We don't like thorns. Because when you have to weed it, have you ever had thorns in your fingers? Oh, isn't it sore for days? And you look and you can't get it out no matter how you try. And every time you touch it, it's sore. We don't like thorns. Well, plants don't like thorns either, because look at what it does. It grew up, the plants grew up with the thorns and choked the plants. Do you remember I did that? Choked. When you choked, you can't breathe. And when you can't breathe, you die. So the plants all withered and died. So still, there's no harvest. It's terrible, isn't it? Let's try the next verse. Look at the next verse. Where are we now? Can you see? We've read 5, we've read 6, we've read 7. Now, look at it. Other seed fell on what kind of? Yes, good soil. It came up and it gave a great crop, a hundred times more than was sown. That's a good crop, isn't it? And so that meant that people would be able to harvest it. There would be food to eat. Now, what did Jesus mean when he said, people who have ears? You see, he went on to explain what that story meant. We talk about parables. People, when they say a parable, they mean Jesus talking about things we know about, like seeds and crops. But Jesus gave it a, a new meaning. What did he mean then? Well, the first crop on the path where it was so dry, that's like the pupil who's in the lesson and when he gets to the end and they leave the class and mum says, so what did you learn today? Um, I can't remember. Imagine, straight after the lesson, you've remembered nothing. That's because you're like on the path and you didn't have birds in your head taking away the words like the seeds, but you weren't concentrating. And so what you heard didn't really mean anything to you. You learned nothing. You're not going to grow like Jesus wants you to. That's very sad. What can you do about that? You must learn to listen to what the teacher is saying. You must learn to bring your Bible so that you can read it as well and learn what Jesus wants you to learn. Going on to the next lot, we saw the rock. Now, they did grow a little bit, but what happened? They only grew a little bit. Maybe you remember what you heard for maybe Monday and Tuesday, and the teacher said, Remember we were learning and we said, read your Bible every day. And you said, oh yes, I want to please Jesus. So Monday you read your Bible, oh yes. But Tuesday you got up late because you watched television and you were late getting up because you went to bed late. So you said, oh, I'll read it later. But later didn't come. So you see, you skipped Tuesday and you lost the habit. Well, you're like on the rock where very soon what you learnt on Sunday also has been forgotten after a few days. That's very sad. Look at the third one. What is it? Thorns. 
Now what are thorns in our lives? I know what they are in the garden, but what are they in, in school and in the playground? Usually that's where we get so busy doing other things. It can be people, it can be TV, it can be computer games, it can be going visiting a friend when you should be perhaps doing your homework, then you have to do your homework when you should be reading your Bible. And so the days pass and you're too busy for God and His Word. So the time has been taken by other things. You're choked. You're learning nothing. You're dying spiritually again. So sad. But I'm sure you're going to be like the good seed where you're going to carry on, look at that, reading and yielding a wonderful crop. That means people are going to be able to see that you are doing good things and behaving in good ways which are pleasing to God. That's the fruit we will see, the harvest we will see, your good deeds, your kind in what you say to people, your helpful to people who need help, your pleasing Jesus. Isn't that what you want to be? Let's pray and ask God to help you be good soil. Father, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for teaching us. Above all, we thank you for helping us to be good like you want us to be by giving us your spirit to live within us helping us to be kind and helpful and obedient and keeping your laws living to please you we thank you amen that's today's lesson now we've got to go out and live to please jesus not just now not just tomorrow but every day. Bye-bye. I hope you'll come for the next Sunday School lesson next Sunday. Bye-bye.